to be in God's house. Uh, you may be seated. I'm thankful to be in true holiness. I'm thankful to be a separated people called for God's own glory. Again, the scriptures are very plain. He was in the world and the world was made by him. Referring to Jesus. Genesis 1 and 1 says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Amen. So once again, without any doubt, according to the scripture, the same God of the Old Testament is the same Jesus of the New Testament. Yes. Again, we can only have one creator. Yes. Malachi 2 and 10, Have we not all one Father? Yes. Hath not one God created us? Amen. So once again, I testify for the record that I am Jesus only. Yes. And I will not bow. I will not compromise. I will not recognize any tritheism, Amen. any trinity of gods, any three type of deities. Amen. All that is a fictional uh, message that was brought forth by the Roman Catholic Church. Amen. And uh, I say to all who recognize the trinity, you need to take that right back to the Roman Catholic Church. Amen. And let them take it back to the devil where they got it from. Amen. Amen. Now, now, with that in mind, let me go to my Bible class. Uh, to the preaching of the gospel, I greet you in the matchless name of Jesus. Those are in the sanctuary proper and in your proper and respective places. In the book of Romans, the 16th chapter, and right from verse 25, now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began but now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. Now again the Bible is to be obeyed. The Bible is not just a book to read for some pretty stories. We have to allow the Word of God to have its free course. And that free course is to develop within us. Y'all hear me close. A character that must reflect Christ within or the Holy Ghost indwelling. When we allow the Spirit of God to have its way, then we begin to transcend from a kind of fleshly being to a spiritual being in a fleshly body. When you are a spiritual being in a fleshly body, the flesh no longer dominates or controls the spirit man. Amen. It's the spirit that now takes preeminence or has the uh, divine authority to make the body do exactly what God has instructed for the body to do. Amen. So when we understand the importance of not changing the scripture, not trying to dilute, not trying to alter, not trying to compromise. Yes. Once we understand this, then we are able to make a conscious decision within ourselves. Yes. Am I going to be saved or am I not? Am I going to follow God or am I going to follow my own uh, personal persuasion? Do I want the pleasures of this world yes. for a season? Yes. Or do I want eternal life forever? Amen. 
So again, we have to make a decision, church, and time is quickly running down. Uh, the false churches are multiplying so fast. And the doctrine of the itching ears message make me feel good. Tell me how I can be blessed. Tell me how I can get a blessing. But they never tell anyone concerning the covenant responsibility. And this is what we have to focus on tonight, is the covenant responsibility to a people that have made up their mind that they're going to serve God and will receive the ultimate reward, which is uh, eternal life in heavenly places forever. This is our ultimate goal. This is what we are striving for. So here Paul says in Romans uh, 16, 26, but now is made manifest or revealed by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God. Uh -huh. Made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. To everybody for obedience. Amen. Amen. We have to understand when God established a covenant people, he had to give a set of rules. The rules prove who you are in Christ Jesus. Yeah. It, it, it's not a difficult task, or rather, it's not uh, difficult to comprehend. Amen. The Bible gives a set of rules to develop the character within the individual. Amen. And when that individual follows the rule, then that character transforms itself into a Christ-like being. Amen. But when you have a, a, a conflict with the Word of God, when you don't want to follow certain instructions because you feel that maybe they are not necessary, but it's not about what you think. Amen. It's what God has already ordained. So again, we have to understand the importance of a humble heart. We have to understand the importance of obedience. Yeah. And we have to also understand that this covenant relationship is personal, very personal. Amen. It's to the individual. And no one can make decisions for you you have to make decisions for yourself. Amen. Nobody can be saved for you. Amen. Amen. God paid that price at Calvary. Yeah. He died that we might be saved. Yeah. But it's up to the individual to follow the instructions. We know the story of the rich young ruler. He came to God and said, I want to be saved. Amen. And uh, God said, have you kept the commandments? He said, yes. Uh, have you obeyed your mother and father? I honored your mother and father. He said, yes. I've done all that since my youth. Yeah. But God said, there's one thing that you lack. Sell everything that you have. And then come back and pick up your cross and follow me. Amen. But you can't follow me unless you give up everything. Right. Amen. God will not take any type of worship that is feigned. Amen. That is uh, halfway. Amen. That is part way. Yeah. That is most of the way. Amen. Each individual must make a conscious decision Lord, I'm going to give you all I have, and that's my heart, mind, body, and soul. Right. Paul said, present your body as what? Right. A living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service. So each person must make a conscious decision to give God all that they have. And again, that's their heart, mind, body, and soul. And when you do this, then God made a covenant promise to you that he settled at Calvary's cross in his own blood. He said, I'll bless you in this life and in the life to come, eternal life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. And on the way, blessings in this life. He'll bless your loved ones. Amen. He'll protect your children on the way and from school. Thank you, Lord. He'll make a way of escape when trouble comes. Yes. Yeah. God will do this because of the covenant relationship that he has established with humanity. Yeah. But humanity has to first love God. Amen. And the love that you have for God has to be proven by a action within the character of the individual. Yeah. So there's nothing that is too difficult, nothing that God, uh, some may say that, well, the Bible is controlling. <laughs> Well, it is controlling. Amen. <laughs> what kind of God would it be if he couldn't tell you what to do? That's right, prophet. Teach. Be no sense in being God if you're going to do what you want to do. All right. <laughs> or do what God uh, wants you to do if you like it, if you agree with it. It's not about agreement. Amen. It's not about whether you like it or not. Amen. It's about a submissive attitude yes. to serve God because he is God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And his next breath is in his hand That's right. that we take Amen. in God's hand. Our children are blessed by angels that God sent to encamp around them. Amen.